In this video, I'm going to be discussing and showing how to test the peak inverse voltage, the breakdown voltage of a unknown diode and be able to determine what it is so you'll be able to better apply the diode for whatever application you may have. First thing you need for testing reverse breakdown voltage or high voltage breakdown is a high voltage source. In this case, an easy, readily available one is an electric fence charger. Added benefit of the electric fence charger is that it's a current limited supply. Current limited is around 10 milliamps for this one. That way, if someone happens to come across it, physically come across the terminals, it won't kill you because otherwise it wouldn't be a fence charger, it would be a fence electrocutor. And in that regard, try to use something like that for a low current application. Do not try to use a freaking 1000 watt high voltage transformer for the test source for this test because it ain't needed. All you're going to do is need a couple milliamps. And if you come across that, you won't be getting zapped. You'll be getting the Grim Reaper treatment. So avoid that for a test like this. And you also need a high voltage capacitor. Preferably low value because you don't want something large enough to store up enough charge to potentially kill you. Like one 2 microfarad. This one here is a 2 microfarad at 2000 volts. It'll still give a really, really good kick. So don't try to... Uh, try to avoid accidentally coming in contact with it. But the fact that it's a smaller capacitor will be in your favor if you ever do. And variable AC power supply to feed the electric fence charger so you can adjust the voltage up and uh, control it to bring it up just to where you can start to see the breakdown happen. A microwave diode that can tolerate the voltage that you're charging the capacitor with. A couple mega ohm resistor for the bleeder, resistor for the capacitor to bring the voltage back down to zero when you turn off the power. To facilitate switching the diode to another one under test. And the current limiting resistor, probably about two to three mega ohm. That goes in series with the diode to limit the current so you have a controlled breakdown. And finally, the meter that goes across the diode to determine what its actual breakdown voltage is. When it can tolerate the voltage in question about one and a half, two thousand volts. In this, in this situation, I'm using a Heathkit vacuum tube voltmeter, which has an input rating of 1,500 volts. And I'll lash up the whole thing ad hoc here to uh, let you see the quick and easy setup that you can make up for testing breakdown voltage. It just parts off the shelf. Granted, if you're going to be doing a lot of this, you'd probably want to make a permanent... built-in or bench-mounted unit that you can, it's self-contained with just two terminals that you can hook up to a diode under test and 
check the um, breakdown voltage on it, but for someone isn't, that isn't planning on doing this for uh, a career or for a long period of time, then just a quick lash up is the quickest and easiest way to get something to check the potential diode under test. I'll get that lashed up and I'll be right back. Alright. It's the last step. And remember, uh, before I show you all this, that working with high voltage, of course, is dangerous. It is your responsibility to use your own best judgment in what you do. This is just an example. If you do not know exactly what you're doing and do not understand everything going on, on this workbench, do not even contemplate trying this at home. Anything you do beyond that is your own responsibility. So, let's get started here. The way it's lashed up is the variac hooked up to the isolated supply. The variac feeds bug zapper or the electric fence charger more properly called to uh, the oil fill cap with the microwave diode and the bleeder resistor to bring it back down to zero when the power is removed that terminal there is the common negative terminal which of course is hooked to one terminal of the fence charger hooked to the meter and hooked to the diode under test which will be going right there. The other terminal has the microwave diode hooked to it to charge it with the DC voltage and the current limiting resistor which limits the avalanche current into the diode under test to a safe value so you won't destructively test the diode which of course goes over to the voltage meter in question and let me see here get it tilted down uh, stop and refocus the camera All right, meter scale from 0 to 1.5 kV, and when I turn on the power, and when I slowly turn up the variac, of course the voltage will slowly come up depending on how fast I crank it up, to the ultimate voltage in this case, including the voltage drop, from the meter loading and stuff on the resistor to about 1.45 kV or 1450 volts when you turn the variac back down the voltage in the capacitor will slowly drop back to normal or to zero do not touch anything in the circuit until that point in time which it has dropped back to pretty much zero voltage and let's see here still dropping down to about 200 volts down to about it's going down on its way all right now, to hook the first diode under test, in this example situation, see, drop down to about 50, 40, 30 volts. Diode under test will be hooked there. Alright, got the first diode hooked up, ready to go. With the cathode to the positive, anode to the negative. 
and 0 volts to 1.5 kV. Take, slowly turn up the voltage, and you'll see the voltage coming up 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, 1000, and then it just kind of comes to stop just a little bit before 1100. It doesn't want it. You can keep turning it up and the voltage just doesn't want to go up beyond that. That is the point where the uh, diode starts breaking down. Reverse voltage break down the Zener region. So this unknown diode, I've just determined the reverse breakdown voltage is about 1050 volts, 1070 volts or so. Let the voltage drain down and then I'll get the next diode. Alright, next diode under test will be a 1N4001 which according to the spec sheets should be a 50 volt peak inverse voltage diode. Remember earlier I said that the uh, semiconductor manufacturers generally made diodes for the 1000 volt rating and then down labeled them to uh, meet whatever orders they have. This one is labeled as a 1N4001 and we don't see exactly what its peak inverse voltage rating is. So let's start up on the uh, got it in the circuit. Start slowly turning up the voltage. It's already past 100, past 200, past 300, past 400. Man, that's a little stout, little fi uh, uh, 50 volt diode. Past 500, past 600, past 700, past 800. Past 900, past 1000, past 1100, past 1200, past 1300, past 1400, and looks like it just about basically running to the limit of the machine. 1400 volts, no sign of breakdown. And it's rated as a 50 volt diode, 50, vo uh, 50 volt peak inverse voltage. That's kind of an understatement. Let that one drag down. Then we'll go to the next unlabeled diode. Well, that one was an unlabeled. Uh, that one was labeled, but we'll go to a completely unknown one next, which is this one here, metal case one. Alright, got metal cased, unlabeled diode in the circuit, ready to start applying voltage. Bring it up 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, and there it just kind of hits the rock wall about 800. Yeah, about 800, 850 volts. Turn it down and it starts dropping. Try to run it back up. And you know, it just about 900 volts. Slowly drop going up, but until it's hitting the breakdown somewhere around there. So 8, 900 voltage. 8, 900 volts peak inverse voltage on that one. Let that drop down go to the next. Yeah, got the next diode in place. Metal case. One in, according to specifications, one in, five, four, seven. See what it can do in real life. 100, 200, 300, 
400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 800, it hits the brick wall. Eight, about 825, it hits the brick wall. 825 volts. On to the next one here. Alright. In this application, we have a stud mount diode that someone had a tendency to paint over, spray paint over, so of course, no idea what its voltage rating is. There's only one way to find out. Let's put the power to the sucker. Alright, start cranking up the variac. 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, that, well, it's hitting the brick wall about 980, 975, 980 volts. That's what that diode is good for, at maximum. Do, do, do. All right, this test, TO220, fast recovery, dual diode. See what the voltage rating of it is. 100, 200, 250 brick walls. Turn it down. Wait for it to drop to zero. And go, go to the next item under test. In this application, we're in this device under test. We have an aluminum case bridge rectifier, salvaged out of the stereo, originally used on about a 50 to 60 volt rail to rail application. I could look up the part number, but it's just easier hooking up to this. Turn up the voltage 100, 200, 300, 400. At 350, it tops out at in brick walls. Alright, that should give you an idea of a basic use of it. And again, remember that the uh, Variac feeds the Fence charger, which goes to the bridge, uh, to the microwave diode, charge a capacitor, current limiting resistor, feeds both the device under test and the voltmeter, and whatever voltage the diode starts breaking down at will be reflected on the voltmeter. And, as always, remember when you're using it, or something like that, only use one hand at a time. Use it to either adjust the very act, or one hand to connect the component under test. Do not use both hands at the same time. Do not grab both leads with both hands. Yes, it's limited to the current limiting resistor, but a milliamp will still give you a nasty buzz. All in all, take care. Next video, we'll be talking about the recovery time of a diode and how to test it with a normal, with a normal oscilloscope and the function generator. Beyond that, until next time, see ya.